Hi there, my name is Polish Links. Welcome to Racing Angels Reborn from 8 Has Studios. Let's start. Oh yeah, it's a Yuri game from what I know. You never feel as much pride as the first time you are given command. An instructor at the academy once told me that. There is something to be said about that. My first command was a listening outpost, outpost on some blackwater swamp planet that didn't have an official name. I called it my water hell. My command consisted of myself, two automated recording machines and a virtual intelligence to manage the machines. I was alone during my stint as a lieutenant and a private captain. The only thing that kept me sane were the games for my virtual systems. I'm pretty sure I managed to beat every single role-playing game known to the galaxy. Sure, there haven't been many, very many made since the war for our survival started so many years ago, but still. When I signed up to fight, I thought the Katajon Defense Force would have been smart enough to send me to the front. Nope, I go to Water Hill with constant mod problems. They sent my classmates, who were far less capable than I to the front. Those losers got the command, task forces and fight. And like I predicted, most of them perished with their commands. They were blind fools, idiots, if I would have been there, this war could have been over by now. Instead, innocent people, brave warriors and powerful war machines had to be sacrificed to some dumb tactical officer's bad battle plans. Not anymore. I've been watching the Loadmaster and her droids moving cargo for a few minutes. I might have to inquire if she knows anything about my welcoming party. As I walk to her, I catch notice of her short stature and non-regulation issue her hat. Great, she's a Hoban. During my academy and training years, I never saw too many of them. While nimble and dexterous, they aren't what you would call our A-class students. Most of them are as dense as rocks. Even now, she's smiling and waving at me with unprofessional excitement. No bearing, no discipline. Excuse me, but could I ask you... <clears throat> Wait. We are Natalie, right? I think so. Well, at least Natalie doesn't look like the girl on the screen here. So, excuse me, but could I ask you a quick question? Certainly, how can I help you? I glance over her uniform and notice the small insignia that tells me she's lo a lowly flight officer. If this is the sort of professional treatment my forces give, I'm going to have a difficult time. Still, she's a member of the crew and someone I'm going to have to work with at, on a day-to-day -day basis. I can tolerate a little bit of, of it. I'm Major Natalie Puchil. I'm looking for the bridge. You're almost there! Thank you for your assistance, flight officer. I'm glad to help out. If you get lost, I'll be finished loading soon and can show you around. That's kind, but I should be fine. Don't worry, Kelly. We're here to show her around. Waiting at the end of the hall are a pair of majors approaching me. My real welcoming party, I guess? No. One of them is a handsome pale-haired freakon with large, creamy wings and a soft, cheery look on his face. The other man. You've gotten soft over the years, Natalie. Maybe I have, but at least I haven't gotten lax with my support, letting a kid load all of the supplies by herself. I expect better of leadership from you. I always thought you were asleep during the legation class at the academy. You're the one to talk, I know you slept through the first aid course. I take it you do know each other. We graduated from the same academy class. Old friends. Is Major Hackett smiling? I know, this might be the sign of the Armageddon. I'm just glad that something could warm my wigman's heart. My name is Alphonse Stenzing. Alphonse. That really sounds bad from the very beginning, sir. You already know so. Major Natalie Puchil reporting. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Flight Officer Kali Migi. I'm not actually a kid. I'm a hobbin. It's nice to meet you, Flight Officer Migi. For you could stand to listen to Sol a bit about professionalism, he is right about some things. I'm sorry, Mom. It has been hard adjusting to military life. 
keep it. Be the best officer you can be. Yeah, mom. I can see why you like her so. Hush! My Tenzin, we need to get going and let Natalie settle in before Rezona gets her clothes out. You mean, Commander Rezona? I'm going to go back to the loading supplies, sir. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Do you see what I have to go through? That's why I'm glad to see you, Natalie. So I can correct you as well? Here, let me take your luggage. Are you sure? Let's drop those bags off and take our tour of the ship. It's small, but our work is cut out for us. I let him, so let's re carry all of her luggage without even offering a single shred of help. Zuri can roundhouse kick me through a wall. She didn't need to help. Oh, Kyle. E. Kylie. Kylie, sorry. You packed light, as always. Uniforms and basic health carried items. I packed just like the diplomat list requirements. Most people don't listen to that. They seem to think we have plenty of space on the ship for things like dumbbells and personal effects. I was told that the list was the official record. You were told right, the force is growing to slack. So slack, take Kali for, for instance. Me? Yeah. I don't think we could have had a better quartermaster. She's a wizard with our equipment, nothing ever stays broken. If you need something, this stock on the next supply run. But you saw how she treats superior officers. She seems to think regulation and professional behavior don't matter, if you just do it well. We have those regulations for a reason. We deal with life and death situations. You have to be able to know exactly what the person next to you is going to do. Exactly. You wouldn't believe how grateful I am to have someone here who understands that. Rizona just doesn't understand that being good and being a team just doesn't cut it. Well, I'm here now. We'll start bringing the ship up to code. Damn right. So... You really didn't help poor Kylie with her bags. It was okay. I managed. Well, he can help make it up to you by helping finishing loading up equipment. I think that's the first thing we can bring up to code. Eh. Only for you, Natalie. I will hope Kylie never asks for help when she needs it. Let's show her the power of a trio of majors. I am starting to believe that the gods might have blessed us with your presence here. If I can still move after this, I will consider agreeing. Thanks, Sol. I'm only helping because Kali is our quartermaster. I wouldn't waste my time if some of those boxes didn't contain sticks, sticks from back home on Queen. Sticks. But then we are going back to the tour. No further delays, please. Deal. No deal. Welcome to the bridge. It isn't much but it beats being stuck in that tiny corlet cockpit. You flew fighters? Two years on the front line with the KSS Xeon. Sounds exciting. Not when you get caught up in a major conspiracy. Please tell me you aren't planning to overthrow the board of directors. We were working here. My car can't handle another one. Whoa, what? On second thought, don't ask. It brings up too many bad memories. Speaking of bad memories, where is your ball and chain? I thought both you and Lena were going to be fighter pilots together. Don't ask. Was it that bad? Ask me when I've had a few drinks. You don't drink. So don't ask me again, please. Sorry. Bad memories, not. I never thought befriending mods could ruin my life in so many ways. Non-humans ruined your relationship? Emut. Major croquet. Eh, croquet. Where the fuck did this desk come from? I'm sorry for cursing again. I just can't control it, find, uh, it lately for some reason. Maybe that's because of being tired. Well, okay, Major Hackett. We are talking about a pet a friend of mine had. I turned out to be a rabbit dog. When you use the term dog, remember? What if I said? What I said if I heard you disparage your fellow servicemen again? I do, madam. And what was that? Immediate discharge, madam. That is correct, Major Puchil. You 
Too well to note Major Hackett's lesson. We are a team here on the Nimrus. We work as a single unit. I will not tolerate those who cannot act as a term on my ship. That is the one guiding principle that I must make clear. Yes, ma'am. My last experience with a Saito was not a pleasant one. I hope not to repeat it. I bite my lip. Great. She's one of those commanders who have had a bad experience with our organization in the past. Sure, some of us may be a little controlled and determined, but we get results. The stories I've heard from my instructor were brutal. Selling out your command for success was common, not an exception. I don't believe in that mentality. There are limits to how far you can go before you become the monster you are fighting to destroy. Never, never will I sink that low. You have nothing to fear from me, Commander. Earn my trust, Major Puchel. I want to give it to you, but you need to improve yourself. I will. Damn it, I completely forgot to report in. Ma'am, Major Puchil reporting in. I am the Special Investigations and Tactics Officer assigned to the KSS Nimros. Hmm, welcome to my ship, Major. She is one of the best tactical officers in the force, madam. I've read the training report. Top of your class, correct? Yes, madam. How many failed out in your class? Huh, around 40%. And the average is 20. Why do you think that happened? Lack of dedication. They were not cut f out for the service. And what did you do to help them pass? Everything you could, am I right? Eh? We fight and die as a team on the ship, Major. Earn my trust. That doesn't make sense. Does it? Yeah, Commander. At 10.05, we'll bring... We'll be holding an all call for the ship. You will brief our mission to the entire crew. Until that time, you are off duty. Major Hackett will be your guide. Thank you. You have her quarters beside it, Major Hackett? Yeah, I was going to put her in the empty room. Incorrect. She'll be rooming with Captain Moonfollow. And what will be doing with the uh, what will be doing with the empty room? <clears throat> Our ship doctor says he is tired of sleeping the mad ward and laid claim to it. That slimy, yeah, man. That's all. Dismissed. Let's get out of here quickly before she thinks of something else. Wait, I have a question to ask. Ah, <sighs> all right. Certainly. What are you curious about? How is the comlink of the on the ship for gaming? <laughs> Please tell me a little more about the ship. <laughs> <laughs> so do you ask about gaming? Oh, let's ask about ship. I've read up on the specs of the ship, but the profile is suggested this version might be different. I noticed that your ship's profile was different than a standard hyperfast command and control ship. You've got a very sharp eye. Yeah, this ship was modified in depot. Really? But not for the better. Oh? That all depends. Our crew complements has been reduced due to the removal of the self-defense weaponry. Wait, we have no defensive lasers or cannons? Correct. So we have no weapons officer or lead loader. Also, our impulse drive is a KDS E-501 instead of the standard E-598. As much as I want to bluff our uh, understanding that one, lying won't help me here. And what impact does that have on us, madam? A larger engineering bay and a larger fuel consumption, so our medbay is also removed, but the doctor works out of the secondary research bay instead. Try not to get sick, he's a lecherous demon who has no ethics or hippocratic oath. He's a non-human, isn't he? An Afri, but that doesn't make him any less of a vile monster. I'll keep that in mind. Please do, it's only a matter of time before I catch him and have him court marshaled. How is the comic of the ship for gaming? If we don't have any defensive weapons, do we have any security forces? This one. No defensive weapons to protect us from pirates. What about security when I am at the ground side? We have Zuri. What is a Zuri? Is it some sort of offensive robot? How I really, really, really wish it was. I would be able to turn it off then. 
Lieutenant Zuri is our security officer and in charge of defensive systems on the ship. Which means she doesn't have a lot to do and seems to find time in her day to just wander around and bother everyone. Huh. She wants to help out others. That doesn't sound like a bad thing, Sol. It wouldn't be if she had a better attitude. What's wrong? Is she grumpy? I thought someone like that would work well with you. <laughs> no, she's perky. There have been some days where I just want to tear the happy right out of her soul. Have I ever said it reminds me of a really grumpy cat? <laughs> Not in years. And you haven't changed a bit. Though she may be a bit overenthusiastic at times, Lieutenant Zuri is competent at her job and will provide you adequate security on many missions. Just don't expect her to shut up at all when she gets on her warrior rant. It would be nice to have someone cheerful to hang out with now and then to commence for Mr. Doom and Gloom. I'm just realistic and don't lie and suck code things for you. Sug sugar code, sorry. <sighs> Is there anything sp uh, special about the ship I should know about? Is there anything else I should know about this ship before we set off? Besides the lack of defensive weaponry and substandard parts? While that may be true, most of the crew is relatively experienced in its operations. Despite their laziness and lack of morals, the commander is correct in stating that the crew is decent at their jobs. Don't expect too much, but I do ensure the basics are enforced. Even for his rough and dirty, Sol has never been one to shy away from acknowledging talent. I just wish he'd use it no matter what the outside looks like. The opener shouldn't be an issue, I don't intend to send us into any combat zones if pirates attack fleeing in terror, while not heroic is a perfectly logical course of action. Thanks for the briefing, the information will come in handy to maximize the Imros's utilization. I'm glad to hear it. I had to cut the question and answer session short, but we should continue the tour. You don't want to start your first day tomorrow with no sleep, right? I can feel the first traces of exhaustion begin to set in. This is the first time I've had to do anything remotely like work in years. It feels wonderful. So tiring. Maybe having me mumble through the briefing tomorrow might make it a little more interesting. No doubt, but your leave, madam. Rest well, Major Puchil. We expect much from being dismissed. Let's go drop off your medical records with a perf and grab a bite to eat. That sounds delightful. I'm famished. Famished. If Kali finished stocking everything, we might be able to make a decent meal from the synthesizer. No cook? No cook. We have some limited cooking facilities, but alas, no cook. I don't think I'd want to eat any more dog food anyway. Loop it food. Same thing, trust me. Wolfie can't cook well. You can try eating it, but you'd rather have the sinful stuff. Because she's a loop it or because she can't cook? Can't it be both? I'm not saying all food the mutants cook is bad, but lupid stuff is just blunt and mushy. Try it if you want, you'll see. I can make a decent meal for. I'll make you something nice sometime. I have to compare them. Then we'll have to have a contest to prove it. Not tonight. You promise? I promise. Let's get going. And that's where we actually will end the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. I wonder what will be it will be. Maybe something like Sunrider? We'll see. Alright, see you in the next one. Bye.